a talk about entrepreneurship and technologies behind Atira, facilitated by the ACM student chapter of University of Moratua. Today's guest speaker, Mr. Shantan Kanaganayagam, is the co-founder and CEO at Atiral EduLab Private Limited. He received his master's degree in computing from National University of Singapore and BSc engineering degree from Department of Computer Science and Engineering, University of Moratua. Mr. Shantan, we warmly welcome you on behalf of ACM student chapter of University of Moratua. During this session, Mr. Shantan will share his thoughts on entrepreneurship and introduce the collective intelligence genome in an innovative framework which is useful in creating new businesses with technologies. Also, we'll be able to learn about the technologies and frameworks related to his product at Earth. Now, I would like to invite our head of the department to speak a few words. Good morning. On behalf of the department, let me first welcome Mr. Shantan to the department as well as to this event. Uh, now the world is moving towards generating employment and his thoughts. Thank you. National University of Singapore, I seen a beautiful thing there. The people in the undergraduate, they don't like to look for jobs actually. They like to create the jobs. So what the things in University of Morato when I was there, all the people are actually focusing to find a good job in a good reputed company. But rather than only few people trying to create some, trying to create something new. Something new means something, a job opportunity for some other people. So, the person who is get success is not someone is getting a good job or something like that. Someone is creating job for others and giving the opportunity for others to live their life. So what I'm saying here, leave the footprints behind you. It means it's something you will create for you and for the society and for the peoples, for the peoples around here. So I'm Shine then. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Federal Edu Lab. So well, uh, before starting, let me explain about myself. All of you might have started your coding or something uh, in your level or something like that. Similarly, I have started my coding in my grade, I mean, in my age 16. So at the time, I'm very curious about the programming and uh, the computer because that's the time the computer is evolving and I got a chance to get a computer and simple thing I did the coding is it's pure HTML, not a much thing. Then after that, I have developed a banging application in Java. It's very simple, but what I learned is how to do programming. It's a self-learning opportunity I have made. Then later, I have realized, okay, my passion is always creating something to interact with people, to create a real world communication with the people, rather than just funny application or something. It's useful for the people to make the real communication and the connections. So when I was in the third year in the University of Moratova Computer Science and Engineering, I started to develop a project in PHP. It's tribal matrimonial application. It's, it's basically it's making a connection between peoples based on their based on their astrological perfectly matching them, and it will opportunity for them to connect through the platform. So 
through that one, actually it's not monetarily success business for me, but what I have learned is how to do a business and how to do a programming and basically how to run an application in the enterprise scale. So it's, I have spent a lot of my money in my pockets, I mean, so for the server and all the stuff, but I didn't get, I mean, get my profit or anything. So, but after seven years, I quit that one and I start another job, another foundation, it's Atrel. It's a social networking collaborative learning platform. I will come to Atrel later. Before coming to Atrel, let me ask you some questions. How many of you know what about entrepreneurship and entrepreneur? Who is an entrepreneur? Can someone tell me? Actually, I would like to have this session as an interactive session rather than someone is talking and because we are doing collaborative learning. So collaborative means, you know, everyone copy, right? The word copy. So someone is rather than talking and teacher centered education, education, we would like to have the interaction. It's a collaboration. So someone will start to speak and start the integration. I mean, collaboration here. Anyone know about entrepreneur? Who is an entrepreneur? Ashni? Okay want to create jobs. Any other, any other opinion? Farah? Okay, has some innovative ideas. Well, any other, opinion? from the back door, back side, back door means back. Actually, I mean, when I was studying in the university, I will always sitting in the last row and sometimes put my legs on the chair and okay, it's funny like listening to the lectures and sometimes it's sleeping. So I don't want to, because I know the people's what they're doing in the last row. So please interact with me. So because uh, it's, I would like to share what I can do here. So someone can talk from backside. I mean, last row. What is, who is an entrepreneur? No. Okay, there are a few characteristics, but if you, see, if you Google, there are a lot of explanation and all the wordings you can find for entrepreneur. But what I would like to suggest here is, who is generating a new ideas and process? I'm, 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 I'm trying to give a definition to an entrepreneur in some basic on these characteristics. So the first one is, a generator of new ideas and process is a means providing a better solution to others' problem. Second, is a risk taker. The risk taker means, does not mean jumping from out of a wall or something. He is taking a calculated risk. He know, okay, what are the things is gonna make happens. Okay, these are the precautions I'm gonna take it or something like that. So it's a risk taking behavior, but it's a calculated risk. It doesn't mean to be go and fight for something or something like that. Okay. Then, enterprising individual and resources. He will find the resources and make it available in the right way to make it a success. So he's enterprising the resources and individuals. Entrepreneurial opportunities. It means exploring new opportunities and turn them in every difficult situation in opportunity. It means, what I mean is, how many of you know there's a large traffic jam in history in China in 2010? It's last nearly 10 days. Also, it's last nearly 10, 100 miles. So all the people stuck there, no way to go out. So what happened is, in the roadside villages, the young boys started to become as an on-spot entrepreneur. What they will do is, they collect some goods from the nearest city and sell it. It's a simple way, but what they are trying to do is, they try to find the opportunity, make it success. Then they will solving others' problem because there are no people have find food or water or anything. So they immediately become a billionaire or something. But if when you are talking about money and entrepreneur, okay, before the coming, what, who is an, what is an entrepreneurship? Can someone tell me? No idea. Okay. Entrepreneurship is a process of starting a business or other organizations. So basically it's kind of a starting from the scratch and all this stuff. If, if I started to talk about entrepreneurship, a lot of people think, okay, entrepreneurship is a making of money or something. You will get money, okay, it's fine. But entrepreneurship is not just giving money. It's a lifestyle, basically. You will know how to live the life and you will know how to face the challenges, how to face the opportunities and how to face these peoples and all the things you will know. How to talk with the peoples. If, 
if my, my story, if I tell you, when my when the first presentation when I was doing in the CSC in 2006, Visaka Nanekar Madam Bits told me because no one is hearing my voice from backside. Only few people in the first door can listen my voice. I didn't expect it, but Ms. Akanara kind of told me, told me what you're doing. But today I can't speak a lot because it's, I can proudly say the entrepreneurship skill give me the challenge and give me the focus to develop my skills and also give me the opportunity to talk with different people and know, okay, I, ha I have to build, I mean, I build the confidence to talk in the public speech. So it's just, it's giving the lifestyle for you to live and give you all the opportunity to explore. So rather than money, you will get what you will get. Okay, why should you practice the entrepreneurship? Does anyone having a older, I mean, seniors, people in your home, your grandfather, grandmother, go and ask them, what would you like to do? I mean, what do you think you could have better done in your young age? Go and ask today, they will answer to three answers. First one is, they have might taken more challenge. They would like to, they might have taken helping more peoples. They might have done something that leaving their footsteps. So today I'm going to talk about how to leave this footsteps behind you. And in your old age or in your some, after some, for the youngest, you can let them know, okay, these are the things I have done. These are the things I have gone through. These people I have helped. These are the challenges I have made go through. All the stories you can tell them. So why don't you start it today? Helping people, others people by solving others problems. Learn from mistakes. Everyone will make the mistakes. Startup founders will always make the mistake. They will learn from the mistakes. So, and live a meaningful life by helping others and helping others problems and creating a real application or something like that. Building a brand and leaving the world, leading the world and also leave your footsteps, tell your story to others. Leave your fear and start it today. Fear of failure. I have put the fear of failure means everyone have the fear of failure. Mm -hmm. Because in our culture, uh, people, we grow, I mean, we grow something. If we fail, everyone scroll. I mean, everyone tease me or scroll me. Oh, you failed. You are a waste fellow or something like that. But in a Western culture, it's not like that actually. They will encourage who the person who make the who most failures will be the success person. So we should develop the culture to encourage the people who are trying new, trying to new things and finding the opportunities and all the things we have to encourage. So leave your fear to fail. Fear of failure. Start it. Whatever thing is right. The next question, how to do a startup? Everyone talking about startups and entrepreneurship and everything, but startup is what and startups, how to do it? First, you need to find the opportunity. Opportunity means it's opportunity identification. Explore yourself. Our country has a lot of opportunities, a lot of markets, this you can explore it. So go and identify the opportunity. The opportunity identification, I put the terms as opportunity identification, you have to do a lot of things, market research and all the stuff, but if you go, it's easy for you to just okay think about what are the other what are the problems other people are facing. Let's say for example, okay, I'm coming from Belavate to Moratwe. I can see the roadside. A lot of people are suffering of uh, the tra transportation problems or anything. So how can we improve it? You can suggest a problem. You can suggest any application or something. You can think about it. Then the creativity and innovation, finding a better solution. There are there will be a solution, but how can you improve it? Okay, how can you provide a better solution for that one? Then validity and usability. Test the idea, your idea. Tell about it. Talk about your idea with your friends. Don't fear that he will scroll. I mean, stroll your idea or anything. Just talk. When you talk, when you start to talk, you will get new ideas. It's your idea will start to evolve. So that's how you have to work. Then add the monetary value. Add the monetary value means okay. How can you make it business? The fourth steps coming into the business value. Then scale it. Test it with a small group and scale it to a large group. Now, we have learned about startups. I have discussed about the startup, entrepreneurship, and the entrepreneur. Now, Atural, what we are doing here in Sri Lanka and all the world. Atural is a social networking collaborative learning platform and it's a knowledge hub. Social networking collaborative learning platform. As I told you, you know, Kupi, right? Kupi is kind of a collaborative learning. The collaborative learning is it's there from the beginning. There are two types of learnings. We have teacher-centered learning. It means one teacher is lecturing, the students will listen, then they will go and learn by themselves. Then second is the collaborative learning. 
Collaborative learning means all the people sitting together or something doing the collaboratively, they will talk and share the ideas and listen for other people's idea and talk, I mean discuss and gradually develop their skills. So from the collaborative learning, they can develop their soft skills also. So the collaborative learning is become the trend now. So most of the people are, most of the business are focusing on collaborative learning. So we are developing an application, it's called collaborative learning and social networking plus collaborative learning platform. So I will explain what is social networking collaborative learning later. And it's a knowledge hub. You know what is Moodle, right? It's a learning management system. I think all the people are using Moodle, everyone are using the Moodle here, right? So you know what is learning, what you can do in the Moodles. You can you manage your courses, you can manage your students, you can manage the institute and everything you can manage. You know what is Facebook? It's a social network. What you can do with a social network like Facebook and Twitter and Jammer, everything. It's connecting the peoples and providing a better social networking environment for the people. We at Atzrel, excuse me. Okay, so we are at Excel. What we are trying to do is we are trying to create a combined platform. It's not getting both together. Giving a product, it's facilitating the social networking environment and also for the learning, collaborative learning platforms. So for that one, we try to create a value innovation. How many of you know value innovation here? Can you raise your hand? then I will explain a little bit about the value innovation or something. All right, value innovation is a blue ocean strategy. So blue ocean means if you, if you take a market, let's say if you take a mobile market in Sri Lanka, Dialog, Telecom, sorry, SLT and Mobitel and Suntel, everyone are fighting together in the, the mobile lands, mobile platform landscape. Everyone try to provide the GSM, all the facilities. So we call this as a red ocean. It means everyone is fighting here. So if someone is creating a new market using this mobile data, I mean, let's like say, if I'm creating a new, uh, new, new market for, for the um, broadband, let's say it's a Wi-Fi, it's like said, uh, island-wide Wi-Fi connections. I can provide with the data, I mean, server, all the things. It's a new market. So it means all the people, we call it as a blue ocean. It means it's blue, it's nothing is there, it's I'm the only one here. Later sometimes, okay, everyone in the red ocean, look at this blue ocean, okay, there's a new market here. Everyone jump from there. After sometimes, this blue ocean also started to red ocean become, because everyone is fighting. So every times when the new business started or new opportunities comes, everyone is looking at to create a new business opportunity using a blue ocean. So that's why. All the, I mean, all the organization are focusing in innovation and R&D because through the R&D and innovation, they will try to create the blue ocean every time. Let's say when the iPhone comes, no one is talking about smartphones. So the smartphone is become as a blue ocean. Later, some, later, later all the mobile providers like, I mean, mobile develop, I mean, um, the phone developers like uh, Samsung, all the people trying to develop that uh, smartphone. So that time, the blue oceans, trying to change as a red ocean. So that's how we develop is coming, it's a new product, it's a value innovation, it's called. So how we try to create is, let's say we, I have compared three, four elements here, which means Facebook, Jammer, Moodle, and Azure. So in the basic steps, Facebook has a social networking and cloud solution and through collaborations. So we have identified these components of each and every product and we create a new product from that one. So from that one, we create the value innovation. So you can see this graph. If you want any further explanation, I will explain it later. Then, as I told you, uh, it's, we are providing a platform for collaborative learning platform. So what is providing is, let's say we have CSE. In the CSE department, we can have a private learning, collaborative learning environment. So this environment will facilitate all the CSE students to have a collaborative learning inside. And also, we are providing a public learning, public collaborative environment. It means you can collaborate, the CSE students can have an interface with other learning institutes like SLIT or somewhere else in the Sri Lanka, can have the collaboration with other people. That is called, we call it a public collaboration. So we have a two environment, private and public collaboration for, let's say for that institute like CSE. So, and also we are connecting teachers and students and parents. For the first version, we are not targeting the parents here. 
So we are only targeting that uh, students and teachers at the time being. After that, I talk about the knowledge hub. So it's providing the knowledge hub for all the institutes like CSA, SLIT, National University of Singapore, all the institute can have their own collaborative learning platform and also this giving the opportunity for interacting with individually. So it's a knowledge hub. Let's come to the technical about this one. So the first phase architecture. It's a startup, so we don't have a concrete architecture or we don't have a concrete technology. Okay, this is the things we are going to do. So it's evolving every day. Every day we are trying to find out, okay, this is the best solution we can come up. So first is first for the startup, we need to find out who are the people is interested with this and we need to get the feedback from that business idea. So we develop using the fundamental technologies available and it's the best, I mean, it's the best advanced technologies. So we quickly develop a product and get the grab the customer's attraction and get the feedback from this. Okay, this is the things we are talking about. This is the things we are doing. So this is how we are going to do it. We show it. So for that one, we use that AWS. Everyone know it about Amazon Clouds, right? All the servers we are using Amazon Clouds because it's a startup, we don't have much money to invest buying a server or something. So we can use it as a pay-as-to-go service as Amazon Clouds. So it gives most of facilities for us to scale from small to big any time to any time. So our applications are capable of doing that scaling. So we use the Node.js engines for that notification or any other feeds or anything we want to use. And also we have the collaborative engine web layer is in PHP and JavaScript, simple because we use the PHP, we need to code it very fast and because we need to evolve it very fast. We try to use the Java first, but it's probably we have identified that it takes a lot of time for us to develop a simple things application and it's huge consume a lot of resources. So we go with the PHP because we can easily find the resources also. And also we are using a Wausau streaming engine. So Wausau streaming engine is a video streaming engine. We use it internally and we are streaming through our applications. So, and also we are using Amazon S3 servers for that static file storage and Amazon RBS for this Amazon database. It's very simple. Don't think it's a technical because uh, this is how the startups work. We don't have the, we are not going to work develop the whole project and going to apply this customer feedback analysis or anything we are on that runner. So through the CSC. And if you take to Sri Lanka in another institute, someone is Colombo University of Law Faculty or something, if anyone following an external law degree or something, if you are summoning attached, you are attaching two elements. So every one is elements. So we identify these elements and we come up with the graph theory and we structured in a graph. There's a server, it's not J server, Neo, Neo J for server. So for, for that one, we are using it as the Amazon M3 instance to have the server and all the elements when you are registering a thrill, you are becoming an element in that, the graph. And we are developing another application, it's for the file system management engine. So it will, we need to provide a secure environment for that file sharing in natural platform. So we have a separate application server, it's running a separately engine that is having the file system monitoring based on the privacy that you are giving. This is the basic. If you have any question, you can ask me now. So the basic fundamentals we are using in the development of that framework is we are using PHP truly because we need to develop very fast. We can't wait a lot of time to get the feedbacks about the product or something. So we need to evolve. After some times, after we reach a certain level, we can go for a certain concrete framework. Okay, these are the things we can do. But at the time, Honestly, I'm saying it's not the right way to decide, okay, this is a framework I'm using or something like that. We have to evolve, we are evolving it like that. Every day we are fasting. I mean, if we are fastly developing the product. And also fast adaption. We are using AWS services because it's adaptable and also manage it scalable and manage the cost also for the startups. Using the graph theory to connect the knowledge elements, defining the fundamentals of the knowledge hub. Let's say, if I defining in the knowledge element in the graph, I can easily identify every element through the graph theory. Every element is connected with the graph. So every element have a value and weight. So this one will help us to grow for the next stage of developing a knowledge hub for our vision, through our vision. So now we are implementing the graph theory and everything. And we use the modular architecture. I hope you know the modular architecture. Modular means it's modularizing the simple, simple elements and developing individually and correlating the things to make the product better because it gives the fast phase development and independent development also. Do you have any question in the technology and architectures? 
can you please open your mouth please any questions okay i'm going to the next slide i have talked about i mean i speak about this entrepreneurship and who is entrepreneur what is a startup and how to do with a startup then after that i'm talking about how what we are doing what inside astral and how we are going to progress and what is our vision or something like that so now i'm going to do a small talk about the collective intelligence what is collective intelligence and how it is going to be used everyone is talking about collective intelligence today well but i would like to give some explanation and introduction about collective intelligence it will help you to understand and help you to improve your thought process so it will help you to create new values new businesses and new ideas it will it won't help i mean it's not only help for you to create a new business or something it will definitely help you to in the future to think in a different perspective you will see the old all the perspectives i mean all the thinking process perspective and what are the key components you need to think so collective intelligence the ability of groups of people to be smarter than the smartest individuals in them it means everyone is let's say if it's a group everyone have their own thoughts everyone have to come up with their own thoughts independently and the best idea will be the smartest will be the most smartest people's ideas the most people's ideas so that's the things here it's a collective intelligence here so it's gathering the knowledge from everyone individually and also encourage discontinuity and and conformity and also it's coming with a create a new collective intelligence ideas so if you see wikipedia google and threadless see these are the famous example of this collective intelligence let's say if you see if you see google sorry wikipedia you know how it is working right anyone can create that knowledge it means anyone can create an article anyone can share the article anyone i mean share means anyone can edit and improve the articles anyone can read it how the people are doing it you can say okay its application is facilitated why they want to do it why you want to read that i want to contribute to the wikipedia have you ever thought about it have you think about it what about google if i go to google and type okay what is the name of the first computer it will give detailed explanation detailed answer for me how it is working have you ever thought actually they are working with a collective intelligence so it means the large group of people if you take google millions of people are searching for something and they are submitting articles and all the thing google take this resources and processing and intelligently giving the answer to the question what i am asking so they are applying this collective intelligence theory internally to that one so if you take wikipedia same thing is happening so the threadless how many of you know threadless okay the threadless is a company in the us what they are doing is actually they are they are a t-shirt designers company they are very famous what they are doing is they are connecting designers every week they have a contest like okay design contest for a t-shirt anyone can submit their t-shirt design so end of the week there is a competition anyone can go and vote for their vote for a cast for their vote for a particular design then they will select which is a top design after the end of the week the design that threadless select few designs and they will print the design in the t-shirt and anyone can buy the design okay very simple idea nothing is teacher designing they are not designing actually other people are designing what they are doing is they are just selecting the best t-shirt design and printing and selling they are capitalizing on others idea intelligent that's the thing happened so how they are doing it but a lot of people nearly 50000 people are in, i mean actively participating in this competition how they are doing everything is in the collective intelligence so we call this video is giving you a detailed explanation about collective intelligence and uh, it, i hope this will help you to understand rather than i am speaking to you because it's he is giving more detailed information then later i can continue with my talk
about these new kinds of collective intelligence, things like Google and Wikipedia and Innocentive and so forth. But there aren't yet very many companies who are really taking advantage of these new possibilities. I think one reason for that is that people hear about these collective intelligence examples, they sound cool, but it seems like some sort of big amorphous mass of cool things that people don't quite know how to think about for something as something they could actually do. What we're trying to do in this article is give you a much more sort of step-by-step -step toolbox of the pieces that are in these famous examples of collective intelligence. We call these pieces genes. They're essentially the design patterns that have been used in a certain way in these cases, but we believe can be recombined in many other ways to create very interesting new ways of using collective intelligence in lots more companies than have done so so far. But let me give you an idea about the ways we think about identifying these different genes for collective intelligence. We start by saying any activity needs to have genes to answer four key questions. What is being done? Who is doing it? Why are they doing it? And how are they doing it? For instance, in the category of how, two of the subtypes of genes we identify are collections and then an even more specialized kind of collection called contest. So a collection just means a lot of people create a lot of different things independently. For instance, YouTube is an example of a collection where many people independently create their videos and put them up on the YouTube website. But a specialized kind of collection, the one we call contest, is illustrated by Innocentive, where they let companies outsource difficult research problems or research questions to get answers from anyone who wants to contribute in a global pool of over 200,000 scientists and technologists around the world. In that case, a collection is also created. That is, for each company's problem, a collection of possible solutions to that problem are created. But here, the company that has the problem really only wants one or two solutions. So they select from among the collection of solutions people sent in the one or two that they want to reward with prizes that often are as much as $100,000 or so, and that they then get the intellectual property rights to use. A lot of people have heard stories about collective intelligence examples, and they think, well, that's the end of the story. But I don't think these early examples are the end of the story. I think they're just barely the beginning. And I think we'll see far more examples of many, many new kinds of collective intelligence, mixing people, computers, and the widespread communication enabled by things like the internet. I think we'll see more and more examples of those throughout business in the coming decades. Let's come back to the presentation. Let's come back. So, hope you know, understand. Hope you understand what is collective intelligence and what is the importance of this one. So, the coming era is going to be the collective intelligence. So, already we can see a lot of applications, a lot of companies started to do the collective intelligence. In somehow, you may realize it's collective intelligence. So, most of the time we realize we didn't realize it's a collective intelligence and they are applying, but in the back end, they are applying the collective intelligence. So, for example, the Google and Wikipedia is very pretty examples, but you can see other examples also. So, the collective intelligence genomes. It's a genomes means it's a biological term genes. It's coming from the biological terms genes. So, it's defined the basic components of the collective intelligence. So, they have identified from the four basic questions. What is being done? Who is doing it? And why they are doing it? How it is being done? So what is being done means it's a goal. What you have to do with it? Then who is, be, who is doing it? It's a staffing. Who are the people going to do it? And who are the people going to influ, influence and interact in this application? And why they are doing it? What's the purpose? What they are going to give? What they are going to get? And what, they are going to, what we are going to give? And how it's being done? 
how it's being done is the technology how they are how we are going to give the platform to do these things so let's come to a another example do you know who is this everyone know he's a linux trolls he is the founder of linux he is the leader of the first major open source software development community in 1991 he was an undergraduate student he developed an software today we have just we are called linux what he did is he give the software as an open source why because he doesn't have much resources to continue the development and much resources to put the money or something the time or something for had to develop he realized okay these are the big things he need to do but he can't do it alone he come to the public so he did the collective intelligence correctly but that time he doesn't know anything about collective intelligence he did it without knowing anything about collective intelligence i'm going to apply this collective intelligence theory and the framework to his framework his activity and ideas if you are the linux forest just think about what will you do in a certain scenarios you don't have money to do your work i mean money to continue this development or something so what will you do what is the main activity you need to be done He need to create you need to create and decide it means you need to create the application you need to create the software modules and you need to decide which software module need to need to create first it means i'm using the board what you need to, what you need to do means you need to create the software and also you need to create which application components need to develop first these are the things you need to decide okay if you i mean if you are a developer you should know this i mean definitely do you know okay where the point i need to start and what are the what are the application components i'm going to start it now then who who will do this i don't have much resource and my time is compact so how i'm going to get this one who is going to do this the sec second question is who so in his stage he has decided go public right it means he going to use the crowd so he used the crowd to develop this application and he decided to give this to crowd later he used the hierarchical structure to decide which one need to develop first hierarchical structure later okay he has done it now he is to give why the people need to develop this application why they want to contribute to my applications so for this one he identified okay these people are crazy some people are okay trying to develop application for funny i mean it means the part time or something is a for their leisure activity so what he he used the money and glory glory means giving that opportunity to people to become famous so at the time the people are trying to prove themselves so what they do is if a fast growing community anyone will join and then will then contribute it means he is getting a remark so this is a glory in the in, the, in a good in a good contest so he used the glory genes to define this to create this application it means in his emails he most of the times used the playful tone okay hi guys why don't you do this as a play as is, why don't you use it as in your free time so something like that he always encourage the people to contribute and also he give the courage and give the opportunity become certain people to become famous or something through this one so he gives the glory to the people to by doing this application everyone get okay i am a freelancer i am a open source developer they will get attacked something like that so they will get encouraged oh i am a freelancer then everyone will start to join so something like he will start to join and after that how will the people do it the fourth question is how we have identified what need to do 
who is going to do it and why they need to do it, then how they're going to do it. Then for me, there's a platform we need to define all this stuff. I mean, all the people to be connect. That's how the technology is coming. So he used the hierarchy. How right to decide and hierarchy and crowd to decide this uh, hierarchy and crowd collaboration to decide what we need to do. So basically, if you know the open source, how it is working, it's easy for you to understand how the genes are working here. So this is what we call as collective genomes. It will help you to understand in any application if you want to in develop in future or if you want to market it, if you want to reach the people, you have to think, you can think in a way, okay, these are the things I can do, or okay, these and get the help from the crowd or something like that, you can do it. This will help you. So these are the graphs, I will just put it here. Here, if you see this one, the create, new Sophia module need to be create. And who is going to do it? Crowd. What they are going to get it? Love and glory. It means they will love it to do it and they will get the glory. And finally, how they are going to do it? Through the collaboration. Finally, if you come to the design, what you need to design means which are the components need to be developed and which are the components need to be go to the next release. You need to select which modules need to be included. These are the things need to be done. So he did, he, he has, a, he used a hierarchy. Hierarchy means organization structure, one person lead another person, something like that. They will decide, okay, these are the things need to be done. And why we need to do is love and glory, they people also. That's how it's a hierarchy structure, they use it. Let's come to the Wikipedia. It's the same example, but it's a different concept. Here we need, we have multiple desired factors here. Let's say we have to create articles and also we need to provide them the facility to decide which article is the best one and which article need to be deleted, which article need to be permanently deleted, something factors we need to give. So, but we use the crowd, they use the crowd and Wikipedia admins to do these things. So if you see the create, what are the things need to be created and who is going to create it? It's a crowd and why they're going to do it? Because of love and glory and how they're doing it through the collaboration. So. If you come to the last thing, accessing and accessing VPD articles, they need to create new articles and whether keep it a current version or not. So everything is identified as a genes in the particular scenarios. So there are genes here we have identified for the collective intelligence. You can apply these genes and in any canvas. We have, here I have mentioned only few genes. If you go, if you have really interested, then I can share with other genes also in the future. Then you can go through it and understand, okay, how can you apply in a certain scenarios? There are other collective intelligence genome applications is currently we have is design crowd. How many of you know design crowd? It's kind of a freelancer's application. We call it as a freelancer's application, but actually what happened is at the, as I said, explained before <coughs> Threadless, they, ha they, ha they have a, the pool of designers. If I want to design a logo, if I want to design a website or something, I can go for this intelligent peoples and they will create it, it's like a competition. Then we will, I will get a best solution. So for example, we developed the Atrel logo, it is in the last slide, we use the crowd. So it's, we don't know where this developer is coming from, he is from Pakistan, he is from America, he is from USA, Italy, or anyone he is coming from. But we are connecting and we are giving a competition and we are giving the money for them, it's a glory here, how they are doing is glory here, right? But we are giving money, it's a monetary value. So we are giving money for them. Why they are doing it? Get the remarks. When they, when they finished it, they will get the remarks. Okay, he is a good developer or something. He is a rating or something. And also they will get the money also. That's how they are working. So Info Center, this is a, you can get a new ideas or anything from here. And appearance here is what you have with this. You can get a free, actually you can submit your product review. And also you can get any product review from these sites. So it's by the people, for the people. They are telling like that, but actually inside what happening is, it's an, everything is collective intelligence. Collective intelligence means the group of people thinking separately and it will help others people to take the decision. Do you have any question? Have you understand the collective intelligence? So do I need to explain further? What I am, why I choose this collective intelligence is, it's a trend now. If you know this, what to, how to apply it a little bit, 
it will help definitely help you to change your thinking process okay if you got an idea something like that okay you don't know how to improve it then you can have some frameworks or anything to think there are a lot of frameworks innovative frameworks you can apply so but this is very simple to think in a large scale then you can scale it and do it its own thing and you know okay what are the things you need to develop you need to scale to other people so something like that you can identify so i would like to see the csa guys in a, within 5 years more startups coming from csa so that's why i explain about our stories even our failures even our my failures also how i come up because it's i hope it will encourage and definitely it's helpful for you to understand how the startup is working and within a 5 years i would like to see more startup from csa rather than going to singapore to see more start startups okay thank you actually it's for the contents actually it's, if you look at it in the deep core we are targeting that creating a knowledge right. so it's a content so applying the collective intelligence also there it means we are nowadays all the fundamentals have developed so what we need to do is the current this world is moving to a knowledge based economy who is having a great knowledge he will increase i mean he will get uh ideas come to my head uh, so, you think about <laughs> it? Yeah. actually so i mean it? no it's uh, because uh, i said to, because i'm interested in the connecting the people uh -huh. so and also i was applying okay how can i make it most stable and sustainable business value so it's need the connection need to develop and give that resources i mean to continuity so that's so this okay didn't, this didn't happen like in an instant it happened over time yeah it's over time i mean it's, it's because it's starting with a small actually we first atrel it's coming from if you honestly speaking we started a thinking idea is collecting collaborative platform in a, inside the classroom everyone all the people sitting with a tablet and they can interact with the teacher or something like that so the first idea we i propose it in singapore and okay this idea has a lot of question i mean after sharing with investors and everyone they have they have let us i mean they ask a lot of questions it won't work out because you don't have the tablets in classroom and everything then after that okay our thought process will change a lot of things then we will come up with new idea it means evolving the idea and come up with the idea it's now we have atrel but uh, it's it's also evolving it's not a fixed okay this is idea i'm not going to fix it or something that's what i'm saying entrepreneurs is they will find the opportunity and do it so compared to singapore what's the startup environment what is your view sri lanka what i seen is if i talk to an investor they need the money tomorrow return but in singapore not like that but if i talk if i explain about ethrel they are not getting interest actually yeah you will get money after 5 years or something i don't can't interest because it's need money and investment and time so they need quick return. quick return actually and that's what i'm saying they return tomorrow i mean they need to return tomorrow so that they are encouraging something like okay something it's uh, they can get the money very fast and also they are putting the money on that on that one so but atrel is definitely is a good business in goes technology and good uh, in all the aspect but it takes time and phase to come up it's a lot of dedication and a lot of hard works to do do you have any further questions so how many of you have interested to do a startup try your startups when you are in the university when you are going out of the university you will having a tech something like you tried something even though if you fail it will have you a lot of experience the world will look at you in a different perspective
enterprise are not looking for the people who work for them. They are looking for the people who take the challenge because the world is quickly evolving and you need to face the challenge from the world, not from the Sri Lanka. Most of the CSE guys is our batch, I mean, people are very, I mean, in the very good enterprises, but they are, people's, other people are capitalizing on them, this issue. So you can capitalize on your resources and your talents. So thank you very much for your time. And thank you very much, sir, for your time and uh, giving the opportunity for us to share with our thoughts with the CSE students and all the people. Thank you very much. If you have any questions or anything, you can drop me a mail or you can contact me anytime. It will time. Uh, I will drop you the answers if I can. But, um, thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for conducting such an informative session and sharing your valuable ideas and experiences, mainly about entrepreneurship, with us today, in spite of your busy schedule. To conclude the session, on behalf of the ACM student chapter, I would like to convey my gratitude to Dr. Chandana Gamage, the faculty sponsor of ACM student chapter of University of Moratua and all the staff members for the support given in arranging this session. Last but not least, for the staff and all the students for your enthusiastic participation. Thank you.